Hello students. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to see the practical part of the effective stress that is seepage pressure, critical hydraulic gradient and quicksand condition. The mechanisms behind this we will try to understand. And then what is the application of all this to the practice that also we will learn in this lecture. Now friends, by this time you know that the total stress is effective stress plus neutral stress that is sigma dash plus uw which is pore water pressure. In other words, effective stress sigma dash is equal to total stress minus neutral stress. Therefore, uh, we can uh, write an expression that if we are considering a soil sample, sand sample, as shown in figure 1, uh, which is of height h, and there is a container which is connected to the cylindrical tank with the help of tube, and level in the container, level of water in the container is same as that of level of water in the cylindrical tank, then we can write an expression for effective stress at the bottom of the soil sample that is at height h, sigma dash h is equal to this soil being saturated, unit weight of this soil is gamma sat, so gamma sat into h minus gamma w into h. In other words, if we take H common, then gamma sat minus gamma W, which is nothing but submerged unit weight of water into height H. But this above equation 3 is valid when the water is in its static condition. That means both these levels being same, there is no flow of water taking place. But if we consider that the container is raised through height z, then the water level at A will go to the water level at A double dash and then in that case, now there being, there being a difference between the water levels, A dash and A, water always goes from higher level to lower level, so flow of water will now start in this direction, that is in the upward direction through the sample of a soil which we are seeing in this figure. Then obviously there will be change in pore water pressure and that change we are representing by theta uw as written in equation 4. Now when this water is going in the upward direction, energy transfer is affected between the water and the soil due to the viscous friction between them when water percolates upwards. The force corresponding to energy transfer is known as seepage pressure and the hydraulic gradient is given by this difference in the head that is z divided by the length or height of the sample h. Therefore, we can write the increase in neutral stress delta uw as z into gamma w which is equal to i into h into gamma w because we know z is equal to i into h. So if we substitute this value of z here, i into h into gamma w which is given by the equation 6. Now the value of delta u obtained by equation 6 is substituted in equation 4 to get the equation 7 where we can write gamma dash into h minus i into h into gamma w. So effective stress at h is now given by equation 7. But if we continue to go on raising this container, then a stage will come because what will happen, this portion I into H into gamma W, increase in neutral stress, will go on increasing and a stage will come when it will be equal to gamma dash into H. At that particular stage, the effective stress will become 0. When it becomes 0, then LHS being 0, equal to this portion of the equation. So, we can equate two portions of the equations and that is represented in equation 8. Uh, equation 9 then gives what is known as 
critical hydraulic gradient because if you can observe equation 8 h h will get cancelled and then i we can write as gamma dash upon gamma w but this is a special case of hydraulic gradient i when the effective stress becomes zero and because of that when effective stress becomes zero why the condition is critical because soil will not offer any resistance and soil will start behaving like a liquid therefore the hydraulic gradient corresponding to this condition is called as critical hydraulic gradient now the value of uh, submerged unit weight of the soil gamma dash uh, as we know which we are getting from basic relationships is given in the equation 10 that is gamma dash is equal to gamma w into gs minus 1 upon 1 plus e then if we substitute this value of gamma dash in earlier equation 9 that is i c is equal to gamma dash upon gamma w then the whole equation divided by gamma w so gamma w and gamma w will get cancelled and what we will get is gs minus 1 upon 1 plus e therefore we can calculate or estimate the critical hydraulic gradient if we know the specific gravity of the soil solids gs and void ratio of the soil then from darcy's law uh, which uh, you have studied in basic soil mechanics we know that velocity of flow is equal to coefficient of permeability into hydraulic gradient that means this velocity of flow is directly proportional to the hydraulic gradient and we also know that discharge q is equal to area through which this flow is taking place multiplied by this velocity of flow. Let us come to the graphical relationship between hydraulic gradient I which is equal to Z upon H. X axis contains hydraulic gradient and Y axis we are plotting discharge per unit time till I is less than IC that is Q goes on increasing let us say Q goes on increasing but it has not reached critical hydraulic gradient when this will happen when the groundwater table goes on rising then in practical situation I'm talking about this straight line relationship you can see but in this straight line relationship there is coefficient of permeability which is represented by K1 and this coefficient of permeability is a constant by this equation we know that it is a constant so it remains constant for this particular soil once critical hydraulic gradient is reached then there is sudden rise in the discharge Q and due to this sudden rise in discharge Q the particles of the sand are dislodged apart and then the permeability of the sand further increases to value k2 but then again the had relation between hydraulic gradient i and discharge is again a straight line relationship and that line continues further from b to c now if due to fall in hydraulic gradient if discharge is falling then the backward journey from c to b starts once the critical hydraulic gradient is reached here then there is a reduction in the coefficient of permeability and it becomes K3 which then becomes constant till there is no hydraulic gradient, no discharge that means flow stops. But we can observe that the portion DO is lying above OA and what is the meaning of that? The meaning of this is K3 is greater than K1 reduction in discharge when takes place after soil reaches to critical hydraulic gradient 
event that event takes place then there is a permeability k3 which is higher than the original permeability in other words the soil is not following the same path you can observe here in the graph what is the practical meaning of this the permeability k3 is higher than k1 that means when the coefficient of permeability becomes higher when void ratio is higher so the void ratio in this case is higher than this case and the clear meaning of this is void ratio high means what density is low so once the soil or the sand is subjected to critical hydraulic gradient then it cannot regain its original density the density reduction takes place permanently okay and therefore this k2 is greater than k1 k2 is also greater than k3 however k3 is greater than k1 that is event of hydraulic gradient reaching to critical state causes permanent decrease in density of sand now for practical point of view while designing the foundations what is the use or application of this phenomena what does it indicate it indicates that there is reduction in the density permanently taking place once the soil is subjected to this particular event of attaining critical hydraulic gradient that means after the soil attains critical hydraulic gradient its bearing capacity or the shear strength is going to reduced as compared to the one which was originally there before the soil was subjected to critical hydraulic gradient okay so this is important conclusion out of this all discussion and this particular process which is followed from a to b that is sudden rise in discharge without much increase in hydraulic gradient is known as sand boiling or quick sand condition so once the sand is subjected to this phenomena it loses its original density permanently and therefore there is permanent reduction in its bearing power or shear strength as compared to that which was prior to uh, it got subjected to this particular event so friends after uh, studying the concepts of seepage pressure quicksand condition or critical hydraulic gradient uh, we are coming to an end of this chapter on effective stress so i hope now effective stress principle is clear to you so you can use it in other uh, geotechnical designing chapters and foundation engineering applications so keep learning all the best